Hi, I'm John the MedPod Engineer Termel, and this is part one of today's blog post, May the 2nd, 2009, at my Termel blog at Yahoo Groups, titled Goodies in Svetkopoulos Supreme Court Documentation. I had a friend go to the Supreme Court of Canada and dig out the background information to see what the Crown Attorney said were the real ramifications of the Svetkopoulos case, and I found some beauties, and I'm going to be going over the both memoranda of the Crown to the Supreme Court of Canada, and this is what this is about, three-parter. So these are the goodies in the Svetkopoulos documentation to the Supreme Court of Canada. Here's all the good stuff from the Crown's documentation they never thought would see the light of day. So, in the Supreme Court of Canada, on appeal from the Federal Court of Appeal, between the applicant, the Attorney General for Canada, and counsel for the applicant, Sean Godet. Certificate of counsel signed by James Gorham, who's also the Crown Attorney in the Terry Parker case we're working on right now before Justice Tullock of the Ontario Superior Court. And the respondents, Dora Svetkopoulos and others, and counsel for the respondents, Ron Marzell, and at the bottom, Alan Young, Professor Sabater. So, Mr. Gornham is the attorney who argued Svetkopoulos and Terry Parker's case currently under advisement by Judge Tullock and will have to defend against our new Supreme Court of Canada ace. So, Attorney General of Canada's Memorandum. Statement of Facts. Overview. The Federal Court of Canada has interpreted Section 7 of the Charter as conferring the right to obtain marijuana from the supplier of an individual's choice, notwithstanding the existence of an effective licit supply of marijuana provided by a government licensed supplier. If left standing, the decision, A, will remove the ability of the government to limit the size of marijuana grow operations, making it likely that large grow operations will be created, thus raising important security concerns, such as the risk that marijuana will be diverted to criminal use. And, now that's t typical backward thinking when it would be easier for the RCMP to police 10 large grow ops than for them to police 1,000 small ones, right? So, Ron Marzel never refuted that point, so. And B, the Crown says, revives arguments that the offense of marijuana possession in Section 4.1 of the CDSA is unconstitutionally invalid, despite this court having settled the issue in R versus Malmo Levine. Now, I say, listen, isn't the Crown lucky to have that Judas Goat Malmo Levine case to count on? Another Alan Young connected, oops, sorry to help the Crown again, loser. But we know that the Malmo Levine decision only stated what we agree with, that government has the power to prohibit controlled substances. What it did not say was that the prohibition is valid. It only says they can make a valid prohibition, but they have not, since Parker and Krieger is our point. Crown 2. The decision of the federal court also contradicts the judgment of the Ontario Court of Appeal in Hitzig and is inconsistent with the decisions of other lower courts. This court should resolve the conflict in the jurisprudence. Well, I said, the Crown says they're inconsistent because the Ontario Court of Appeal in Hitzig says Section 41B1 was unconstitutional, and now the Federal Court says it too. This is a favorite Crown tactic, claim the opposite of what is. Both courts found the same section unconstitutional for the same reasons, so call that inconsistency. <laughs> so... Paragraph 10, having ensured the existence of a reasonable and illicit supply, the government reintroduced Section 41 in order to limit the number of persons for whom a designated grower can produce marijuana. And I said, the co and of course, the court ruled that that did not mitigate the violation of the right found in Hitzig, and found it violated the same right for the same reason as Hitzig in Svetkopoulos, not inconsistent. So the Crown continues the judgments in the courts below. <coughs> 12. The applications judge, Judge Strayer, granted the application and declared Section 41 to be contrary to Section 7 of the Charter. Strayer concluded that Section 41 negatively affected the respondent's Section 7 liberty and security interests. Strayer found that by reintroducing Section 41, the government had not complied with the court's decision in Hitzig. Part 2. Issues. Why the issues of public importance? And paragraphs 20 to 26, they argue why it's important. But remember, they argued it wasn't of national importance, this issue in Terry Parker's case. 
So the Quran continues the significant implications of the judgments below. 27. By striking down section 41B of the MMAR, the Federal Court of Appeal has removed the limitation of the size of the DPL production facilities. It is now possible for one person to grow marijuana for several authorized marijuana users. In striking down this provision, the Federal Court of Appeal has effectively prevented the government from being able to control the size of the DPL operations. 28. The judgment may result in the proliferation of large-scale marijuana grow operations. To this point, one grower has already indicated an intention of growing for 250 people. This will entail the cultivation and harvesting of several hundred kilograms of marijuana. And I said, good, finally they'll be able to get the benefits of the economies of scale. Crown 29. It's important to emphasize that they were intended to be small operations, producing marijuana for only one person. And I said, reducing any economies of scale down to zero and making the medicine as expensive as possible. Crown 30. Indeed, this rationale, minimizing the risk of diversion, was a key reason for the reintroduction of Section 41B1. And I said again, the risk of diversion is less for 10 large, well-policed grow-ops versus 1,000 small ones, right? Crown 32. Given the high street value and its wide uh, use as a wide use as a recreational drug, it was reasonable for the government to conclude that the risk that DTPL holders will use marijuana for non-medical purposes or that marijuana will be stolen from their premises is greater for larger scale grow operations than for smaller ones. Hey, larger ones can have more security. But anyway, I said, who's going to rob one of those 10 grow ops with the RCMP sitting on top? The rationale is backwards. Crown, 33, the big one. The judgment in this case may create confusion concerning the constitutional validity of the prohibition against the possession of marijuana set out in Section 4 of the CDSA and therefore compromise existing prosecutions under the CDSA. In R versus Polzer, for example, a prosecution currently underway in B.C. Supreme Court. Defense counsel has argued that, by virtue of the Ontario Court of Appeals judgment in R versus J.P., the invalidation of Section 41B1 of the MMAR retrospectively invalidates Section 4.1 of the CDSA in respect of marijuana. And I said, not only now in B.C., but Terry Parker has it before Justice Tullock. Rayal Martin has it now in the Ontario Court of Appeal. Jim Turner, too. After six years of us arguing it, someone in B.C. finally caught on to lead us to victory. Crown. The court in R versus J.P. ruled that the combined effect of Parker and Hitzig meant that there was no constitutionally valid marijuana possession offense between July 31st, 2001 and October 7, 2003, between Terry Parker Day and Alan Young Day, the date the MMAR were constitutionally rectified by the decision in Hitzig. Courts may construe the Federal Court of Appeals decision as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back to December the 3rd, 2003, the date Section 141B1 was reintroduced into the MMAR. Wow! Crown, the conflict between the judgments below and other jurisprudence. The Federal Court of Appeal has now stated that this MMAR is not an adequate response to the supply problem without articulating any reasons explaining why it is so. 35, the number of, a number of other courts across the country have also concluded that the regulatory amendments made by the government in response to the Hitzig decision ensure an adequate supply of marijuana and therefore pass constitutional muster. Signed, Sean Goodett, December 22nd, 2008. So, those were the highlights of the Crown's memorandum to the Supreme Court of Canada.